Hello and welcome to the Titan Styling webinar. This is another webinar brought to you by our amazing Titan team. My name is Yaron Olach and I am on the professional services team here at Titan. With me is Amy Tsaba, head of the creative at Titan. Hi. Uh, hey, Amy. And today we'll be focusing on making sure your projects look absolutely perfect using Titan Styling um, and Titan Web specifically. Amy and I will be showing off a few simple examples and best practices that will completely revolutionize the look and feel of your projects, taking your dry data and turning it into really engaging content. What we'd like everyone to come out from with this webinar is that with minimal effort, you can totally transform your projects into something that your end users will actually enjoy engaging with, and you can do all this without code. Um, as a part of our instruction, I want to share a bit about the Titan platform for those of you maybe new here, or maybe some of you are old here, but are not exactly aware of all the capabilities that are part of the Titan package. So let's take a look at what we have. So as you can see, we've got our Titan forms where you can create fully customizable forms with conditional logic. We also have a Titan web app where you can build anything from forms to landing pages to portals and launch a completely fully responsive web page through this application. We also have Titan docs where you can build custom contracts, proposals, and really any kind of documentation. Um, and of course have dynamic data coming from Salesforce. We also have Titan Sign, where you can create contracts or proposals and really robust uh, signing processes all through Titan Sign. And we've got Titan Survey, where you can develop intricate surveys and questionnaires for really every type of audience and a whole lot of different types of surveys that you can create over there. And we've got a couple more apps, and you can feel free, of course, to go to our website and book a demo with us if you'd like to hear more about any of these apps or anything else. So what will we be covering today in our webinar? Um, so first of all, we'll be going over the web builder and the structure of the web builder. Um, we'll talk about personal styles versus project styles and when you should use which one. We'll talk about alignment and spacing tools, uh, making sure that your forms look completely professional and well-spaced. And we'll also talk about some tips and best practices to make sure that you're making the most out of Titan styling. So with that said, I think we can begin. And Amy, why don't you take it away and uh, show us really what Titan Styling is all about. Okay, thank you, Yaron. I'll just show you my screen. Can I share? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, everyone, uh, nice to see you all. Um, this is the first webinar we, we had ever for styling. So this is quite exciting. Um, mm -hmm. For starting, I would like to just talk about the structure of the builder for those who don't know uh, Web Titan. And um, just so you know um, where everything is. So um, this builder is divided into five main areas. We have the left panel where we have all of our uh, elements and we can mm -hmm. just drag them to our canvas. We also have the project settings on the left panel. Um, another main area is the top menus where we have important functionalities such as uh, save, preview, publish. Mm -hmm. um, another area, which is not exactly an area, but it's part of the builder are the floating panels. Each element has floating panels, one for style, this is it, and one for settings. And we also have a very important uh, floating panel called layer list, this mm -hmm. is it. And this shows you the structure of everything that goes into your page. So it shows the strip and what's inside of it. There's a container and inside the elements, uh, in, these elements are in this container. Okay, so it just shows you where everything is, and then you can move things around. You can also, if you notice, you have three strips here. So if I put something in the middle strip, and then something in the last strip, make it a little bit bigger, then I can change the order of the strips by just dragging. And then I'm smooth. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's really convenient. So would you say the layer list is kind of like a, a way, easy way to make sure that you can find all the elements and know exactly where they are in the hierarchy yes. of your page? 
-hmm. Yes, you can also nav navigate uh, with it because once you click on, a, on an element here, uh, okay, then it's selected on Canvas. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. It's also a way to get to the elements. And also you have a way to make elements hidden. If you want, there's an eye icon. Once I press oh, cool. on it, so it's grayed out here in the builder. Yes, it's grayed. And then if I save and I preview, you'll see it's not showing. Oh, okay, the cool. title is not showing here. Mm -hmm. Okay, no. Okay, so this is our layer list. We don't need it at the moment. And of course, we have uh, the two left uh, areas, which are the canvas. This is the main area here where we um, do everything. And this is where we um, insert all our elements into. And mm -hmm. we cannot um, insert elements outside of this area. It will not work. The outside is called window. And it's actually the real estate of the browser. And it will vary in size. It can be wider and bigger or narrower or, and smaller. And it depends on the screen size and resolution. Mm -hmm. So, uh, But what you need to know is that the canvas lies above the window. So you can actually uh, have different styles for the uh, content area for the canvas and for the window. And it mm -hmm. can look something like this. If I go here, just show you. Okay, so this is a background that I, I put on the window. And then if mm -hmm. I decide I can change the color of the canvas or of the, I'll just change the uh, color of the strip. Okay. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. And the page and the strip goes above it. Okay, so it's layered. Mm -hmm. But if I want to see through, then I can just remove this color. Mm -hmm. and I'll see through. And so the, the window is like right behind of it. Uh -huh. Yes. I see. Cool. Okay. Um, back to builder areas. Another thing I want to say about the canvas, the canvas is divided into uh, strips. This is very important. You can add a strip by pressing on the plus. You can also do it from the element panel here either a blank one, we also have like very nice templates you can use, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so this is another thing and, and- And what would you say like the primary purpose of the strip? Like why would I have more than one strip in my project or on my page? So first of all, it's like a, a logical uh, division. Mm -hmm. Like you have um, long text and you want to divide it somehow. So you divide it into paragraphs. So it's the same mm -hmm. here. Uh, also, when it's divided in, into strips, then it's easier to change their order sometimes. And if you need to, and also give them different styling. So you can have a separate area for like uh, contact us or about us and give it a different color, a different, a different background, maybe different font uh, family, etc. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Got it. So it also, it helps me organize the content on my page and I can style it all differently from one another that way. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So this is in a nutshell, this, these are the areas and this is the, this is how the, the builder is built. Okay. So this is it. Uh, we can, I think we can jump into styles now. Let's do it. Okay. Um, we're going to another screen. Okay, styling. Um, we'll start with something that's called personal style. And uh, personal style, uh, when you click on an element, okay, then you can quickly style it with a quick toolbar that appears here, but not all, the, all of the styling properties are, are there. So you can mm -hmm. open the panel. Mm -hmm. and then and you have a lot more options here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, once you change it, okay, once you change the style of a selected element, that is called personal styling. Okay. Um, thing is, this is like a heading, a text heading element. If I drag another one like this and another one, 
you'll see that by default, they're all black, okay? But each time I select one, I can change it to something different. I can make mm -hmm. this one blue, I can leave this one black or maybe make it green. Mm -hmm. So you can really change the individual style even though they're the same the element. Same one, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's specific, it's a specific uh, style for the selected mm -hmm. element, okay? So it's called it. personal style. Okay, so what you can do is you can uh, use the style for a single element like I showed you. You can mm -hmm. also uh, choose a few elements by holding the control button press down mm -hmm. and then I can change it for all. Oh, cool. So you can style multiple at once. And this is still, you know, this is still considered personal set styling, but it, you're able to do multiple um, yes. elements at once. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cool. Um, okay. So this is it. Now I'll show you something else. Um, okay. Another thing you can do is you've got style classes. Okay, what does that mean? When you open your style panel, you've got something at the top on the left, if you notice, uh, mm -hmm. it's a name. It's the name of the style class because every element that you drag has its own style class. But the name doesn't mean anything. It's like combined of the type of element, which is heading and a number, okay? But mm -hmm. if you wanna, save this class and then use it on other elements, you can do it. So if I say, um, I want to call this Amy one, and I save it, then once I have another heading, I can go to the styles and apply the style. Oh, cool. And you can just um, leverage that same, uh, that same class for yeah, this element as well. Other, Got it. The other elements, yes. But um, the thing is, if I go to another page and I have a heading here, then I don't have the style here because the, the class that I um, saved, sorry, the class that I saved here, okay, I saved is regular. Okay, I just pressed save. So this means if it's a um, regular class, it will only apply on elements in the same page. Okay, that's why when I moved uh -huh. to a different page, I didn't see it. But, mm -hmm. and this is my recommendation for all of you, use global uh, styles. I think, uh, I think it will save you a lot of time. Um, mm -hmm. you'll be and so with the global class, we're able to access that from any page in my project? Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's see how it's done. I'll call it Amy G for Amy Global. I'll save it. And it's here. There it is. Cool. Awesome. Okay, so these are style classes. And uh, I, I think you'll find them very handy. Um, cool. Okay. Okay, let's go next. Um, styles. Um, okay, so each, go back. Uh, each element, as we said before, has uh, style properties, and you'll see they're divided into categories. And uh, <laughs> most elements have got the same categories. So it's usually font, fill, position, size, etc. cetera. Um, it's very straightforward, so I can show you a bit about, I can give you some tips on some of them if you want. Yeah, that'd be, so, that'd be great. Okay, so font, as you know, you've got font family, you've got the weight here, um, the size in pixels, you can al align the text inside of the container if you need to, because you see by default it's aligned left, you can align it to center, center it. or mm -hmm. right. Um, what I would like to show is something nice that's related to the color picker. So this is not really related only to font. It's related wherever, wherever you've got a color picker. Okay? Um, so what's nice about it is uh, you have a chance to uh, save your palette. And when you start working, I think it's very important because each company, each uh, each uh, organization has its own branding. 
its own colors. And when you start working, instead of just going all the time and having to copy and paste the color code here, once you have them saved, when you start, it's very easy. So you, you don't have to look for the colors anymore. So what you do is press on plus, you choose your element, your color, sorry, and you save it. And then, as I said before, it's not related to font or to a certain element. I get, can go to any element I want. For example, I can go to shape. And once I go to the color, there it is. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. So, so you can just save it. the colors that you like working with or maybe that match your brand guide and easily yeah. have those accessible throughout your project. Yes. Yes. Nice. Um, okay. What else have we got? We got fill. Okay, fill is a very important uh, property. Um, it's used a lot. Um, what you can do with fill is um, have a background that is solid. <laughs> you can create a gradient background. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, Let's take this. You can also, um, instead of giving it a color, you can use an image as the background. Okay. Oh, well. And you cover, and then it will stretch to fit the container. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so um, this is very easy. What you need to know about the, the fill, that it applies to almost everything, to elements, to containers, to strips, to, uh, to the page, to the window, everything, to the header, to the footer, everything. So, <laughs> so in general, like we can think of fill as like the background, more or less? Yes, it is background, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, awesome. Okay, so another nice thing, I don't know if people know about Phil, that you can also apply a video to the background. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've seen yeah. that in a couple of projects, but I'd love to see how you actually configure that. Uh, okay. That'd be really cool to see. So this can be applied um, actually only on a container or on a strip. So, um, okay, so I've got it here, you see source. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I'll just put my this up, my MP4 link here. I'll remove the image, and I won't see the. <laughs> so now you see it. Mm -hmm. Once I preview. Oh, this is it. Wow. very cool. <laughs> Yeah. So you can have, so there are only specific elements you were saying that you can use video um, in order to uh, use Just on containers and on mm -hmm. strips. <laughs> it's a great video, Amy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'll just remove this. Okay, kind of, kind of bugs me. Okay, mm -hmm. um, another thing we can do. Um, if I go back to styling, so we talked about fill and we talked about the color palette. Position is where everything is located on the Y and X axis. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's positioned 648 pixels from the top and 742 from the left. And you can, of course, uh, change it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what else? I want to show you something, okay? I want mm -hmm. to show you how to uh, easily style a button, okay? Uh, some, sometimes maybe uh, users can find this a, a bit difficult because mm -hmm. buttons have three states. They have right, so you have to style order. three separate states, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you have to like, usually uh, people think you know you have to go from one to the other and then set the same styles again put the fill here and then put the fill in hover and put the fill in clicked and right. there's a shortcut here okay so what we did is uh we let you only um set the styles for the default state so i'll do this now just to show you 
And then let's make the border less rounded. And okay, so it's you see when I touch it now, it goes back mm -hmm. to, the goes hover to the hover state, state. Which, is, mm -hmm. which is still blue. So what right. do I do? So I don't want to go to the hover myself and manually change everything again. So I go to hover and then I have something called copy from default state. So I click on this. It makes sure that the hover uh, becomes same as the default. Okay. Mm, so now when I mm -hmm. hover on it, it's the same. Also clicked. But a button has to have its effect, right? You want to see it change a little bit when someone's hovering over it or clicking on it. So mm -hmm. now I can make this small change if I want to. Make the fill a little bit darker. And I can make... So I'm just making it so you can see the difference. And then I've got... Mm, I see. Cool. Okay, so, I've got three so, so by using the copy from default state, you only have to slightly alter the other states as opposed to, you know, doing it all from scratch for default hover and click. Yeah. That's really useful. Mm, nice. Yeah. Oh, another thing I remembered. Do you remember mm -hmm. the other day you asked me about padding? Yeah, I, I always struggle with when to use padding and how to use it effectively. So yeah, I would love to see a little bit about how okay. we can... Uh, <laughs> So, so padding refers to the space inside of the element border. Okay, so let's say this is a container, right? So when we click on it, we can see the border. Uh, once we set padding for it, let's say I set padding for top 30 and mm -hmm. left. This means that I create some kind of, you won't see it here, but I create some kind of space above of 30 pixels and on the left. So if I put in, let's say a shape, I'll put it here, you see on the left um, corner, mm -hmm. it will jump. Oh, I see. So it gives it that like little buffer. Yes, because end. it's mm -hmm. padded. It's padded on top and on the left. So I mm -hmm. can't put it there, okay? So this is padding, mm -hmm. okay? So that ensures that your elements kind of stay in the area that you want without them getting too close to the ed you know the edges in this case. Yes. Cool. So, okay. So I think I think we kind of um, oh now I think of it. There's another thing I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you see the strip. We were. We were talking a minute ago about the fill property. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's something that I missed. Okay, there's something called spread mode. Do you know what this is? Yeah, yeah, I wanted to ask about that earlier. I saw it was checked off and I wasn't sure what it was. Uh, for sure, you can explain what that is. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So remember we talked about the canvas, the content area, which you cannot mm -hmm. drag elements outside of. So- right. If I put a fill, um, a background, let's use an image. Um, doesn't really matter. I just want a big one, for example. Mm -hmm. If I put an image here, but I don't want it. If I don't have, sorry, if I don't have a checkbox here, if I didn't have one, if I mm -hmm. um, turn this off, then you'll see that the background mm -hmm. applies only to the content area. I see, it doesn't so, spill over onto the window so, without yeah, the spread this mode. This is how it mm -hmm. was supposed to be. We added this spread mode checkbox so um, users will be able to say that the background spills and goes mm -hmm. from side to side. Uh, and this is very much used in websites today. So we wanted to enable users to do this. So this is what the spread mode is for. Otherwise, cool. it will mm -hmm. only be on the content area. Got it. Very cool. Okay, so I think I'm kind of finished with styles. Um, you want to talk about alignments? Yeah, I think you know this is something that I find people overlook a lot, and I'd love to you know see how form and how we handle uh, you know alignment and spacing because um, so many forms you see these days are just kind of a mess. Yeah, my dog is barking, so I beg your forgiveness, but uh, 
That's okay. <laughs> so good. Um, okay, so yeah, I think uh, most users, um, I don't really know why, but they kind of skip this. And mm -hmm. I think that it's, um, it's bad to do this because the, the, the final result will not look professional if you don't do it. Okay, right. these are very small things and it seems like it's not as important as the rest, but it doesn't take a graphic designer to notice when things are off, when they're not aligned. Uh, people can see this, okay? So it doesn't look professional and you should just pay more attention to spacing and alignment. So let me show you a few tools you can use for doing this. Uh, first of all, we've got something called rulers. Uh, okay, so now we're showing the rulers. You've got a ruler on top and one on the left. And one, mm -hmm. once you click on them, guides appear. Okay, so you can have one, a vertical one. You can have a horizontal one, <clears throat> sorry. And you can move them around. You also have, um, if you'll notice, um, this uh, input mm -hmm. that appears. So you can, you can set the exact amount of pixels that you, that you want to go on X yeah. or Y. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it will move. Oh, cool. Okay, nice. So what's nice about them is that elements stick to them. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to uh, align things to the same line, to the same guide, and then they're aligned. So it makes it mm -hmm. easy. Um, this is one thing. I don't know if you've noticed, but also when I move elements um, next to one another, you can also see automatic guides appearing. See? Yeah, yeah, those are really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those uh, give you a hint on where to drop your element when it's aligned. Okay, so mm -hmm. this is something that I use a lot and uh, I really recommend using these also. Um, another thing you have, as uh, we've got properties for vertical and horizontal um, alignment. One uh, place you can find it is in the quick toolbar here. Mm -hmm. We're all hiding here. Right. And the other place is inside of the style uh, panel. Okay, so it's the same. Mm -hmm. And what it allows you to do is to align one element inside of its parent container. So for example, this number field is currently inside of the strip. So if I apply left alignment, it will- mm, Jumps all the way to the left, left of the strip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. But, so it's always in relation to the container that it's in? Yes. So, mm -hmm. and I'll show you now, if I put it into this container and I align it left, then it mm. will align left to the container. Got it. Not to the strip. Okay, so this is one thing. Another thing you can do with these options for alignment is once you select a few elements, okay, you can align them relatively to one another. So if the number field is higher and I uh, do align top, then the URL field will jump to the same position, okay? So they mm -hmm. will be aligned at the top, mm -hmm. okay? So relative to one another as opposed to yes. the container. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, so this is another thing. Um, and now uh, what I can also show you is something called spacing, spacing, you have vertical and horizontal. Once I click on two or more elements, either in a row or in a column, then I can set a vertical or horizontal space between them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here, for example, when I, what I need to set is this horizontal, and I'll go to the 30, for example. Okay, and I can also align them top. Mm -hmm. so oh, now nice. they're aligned and they've got 30 pixels between them. I can mm -hmm. also do it with three, okay, or with more. Mm -hmm. And just determine the spacing horizontally between all of them. Yes, 
Mm -hmm. And what I recommend to do if you've got columns is first of all, take uh, the top element of each column and do what we did now, which is align them. Okay, so let's say align them top. Now it will not move, but I'm just doing it again so you can see. And set um, horizontal spacing between them, for example, 30, it will not change. And then take, let's say, the left column and set that also with, uh, with vertical spacing of 30, for example and I'll align it left. And then you see, <laughs> I've got the frame already uh, aligned and spaced out, okay? So I've got the top row and the <laughs> left column. And now what I can do is either take the other elements and use the same uh, spacing and alignment tool, or <laughs> I can just use the automatic guides, which will show me for each one where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So once you have the structure, it's a lot easier to use those automatic guides to make sure that the fields are in the exact right place. Yes. And, nice. and now you got, you know, done. three perfect yeah. columns. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Yon. Yeah. So that's uh, uh, all of that is only personal styles. I take it. So yes. we still have the project styles to try to cover here. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Let's talk about project styles. Um, project styles. So we've got a dedicated panel for that. You can reach it from here project style configure. Um, this panel has got all of the properties of all of the elements we have, have in Titan Web. Mm -hmm. um, once you click on an element inside your canvas, then you see exactly where you are in the panel. It shows you the same uh, place, the same element inside the panel. So you don't have to start looking for it. But again, if mm -hmm. you want to look for it, there's a search above. And then you can start styling it, but you have to understand something uh, very important. Project styling um, acts uh, as a theme, okay? So, mm -hmm. The difference between this and the personal styling is that personal styling applies to an element you select on Canvas. This applies mm -hmm. to, an, to an element by its type, okay? So if I've got um, uh, an input text, okay, an input field, such as number, URL, text, they're all uh, considered one type of element, okay? Mm -hmm. And once I set a style for this, then all of these elements will look the same, okay? So I can decide that these are outlined, for example, okay? So mm -hmm. all of them will it change. all the input fields, not just yes, the one you're selecting. Yes, and it doesn't change only here. It will change also for the new elements I will add of, this, of the same type. Okay, mm -hmm. so if I add another text field, it will be the same. Also, it. it will be the same in all of your pages. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is like a theme going through all of your project. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that I recommend doing when you start working, because then, you know, usually when you start working, you want to, you don't want to uh, style each element, you know, right. manually because usually you want things to look, you have the same look and feel. So mm -hmm. you, you want it to be uniform element, anyway. Mm -hmm. Yes, you don't want each element to look, look different. So this is what you should do when you start working. Just set your project style for certain elements. I'm not saying all of them because maybe some of them you won't be even using, but the ones you know you're using, uh, just set their style so everything will look the same. Also, it doesn't really matter if you do it in the beginning, maybe it's easier, but you can also do it uh, in the middle of, of your project, in the middle of building it, okay? Mm -hmm. And it will still apply to all of the elements. 
So I have a question, Amy. If I set a project-wide style, let's say on my input fields, but then I want one specific input field or you know a couple of input fields to look a little bit different, am I still able to go down to the personal level and style those elements? Yes. So mm -hmm. yes. So this is what's nice about it that project styles and personal styles work together. So you can um, set a project style that will act as the basis for, for the look and feel, but then take a certain element, such as the number field, for example, and go to the personal style and change, let's say, the primary to red, and it will be different. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. So you, you would say it, was, it would be best practice to start with the project styles, just so you have a baseline of what everything looks like, more or less. And then if you have more specific things to style, you can go down to the level of personal styles? Yes. Yes. And there are certain things that I, I recommend doing, which is first, uh, setting the font, because usually a project has one dominant font family used. So right. just you do it through project, okay, uh, project level elements. It was open and I didn't notice. Uh, you go to page and font, mm -hmm. and this is where you set it. So I'll just do something that's totally different. This, mm -hmm. and it will change all of the. So that's not just on the input elements. It's you know, everything on the project changes font when you do it from there. Yes, everything mm -hmm. on all of the pages and all of the elements, they mm -hmm. change the font. But then cool. again, you can uh, select a few, okay, and change those. Right, right. So you could always get more specific if you need to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can also get uh, more specific Okay, there are two ways of getting more specific. There's also something I can show you. Let's say, for example, I have buttons. Okay, so if I wanna give a certain uh, project style to my buttons, so they will always be the same throughout my project, then mm -hmm. I do it from the project style. But if you look closely, you can, uh, change the style for all buttons, which is, it says common. Mm -hmm. And if I change the fill here, then you will see that it changes for both buttons. Okay. But right. one button is primary. The other one is secondary. So I can also choose here button and set a style only for the primary. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then for the secondary, I can choose a different style. So I can make a difference within the elements, okay, styling, even in a project style, but you right. must remember that once I uh, use the project style, it acts like a theme. So when I drag more elements of the same type, they will mm -hmm. have the same style. If I did this uh -huh. with personal style, okay, if I, if I would change, this from personal style, then only this one will change. Got it. Cool. So you, on the project level, you can still be specific to maybe, you know, let's say if you were doing inputs, you could do specific text fields would have all red, but that doesn't mean that email fields will be red. So you really can't yes. get specific even on the project level. Yes. Very cool. Okay. Awesome. Um, yeah, so I think this is it uh, for now. Yeah, well, we've covered quite a lot. Keep you in suspense for the next one. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, you know, of course, there's so much more that we can go into here and in styles and, you know, we, we can already see just from this basic demonstration, um, you know, how much there really is to do in styles and really how, how little, you know, you really need CSS and you can really get away with um, relying on the, the Titan styling here. Um, yes. You know, Amy, why don't we pivot and maybe show, you know, just to keep everyone in the loop here, um, you know, often I'll create a project or I'll build a, a skeleton of a project with, you know, basic functionality. And then I want it to look nicer so that we can present it. So what I typically do is I'll, I'll hand Amy off uh, kind of like a skeleton of a project and she'll spruce it up to, you know, a really, really beautiful design. 
Uh, Amy, would you have, do you happen to have anything like that on hand that we could take a look at? So maybe we could see something what, like this. <laughs> yeah. So here you could see uh, really how uh, low level my styling is when I hand it over to Amy and what it looks like. Um, and yeah, if Amy, you would be so kind if you could show us, you know, how would you spruce something like this up so that uh, our end user would actually want to engage with it a little bit? Okay. So let's say this is what uh, this is what Yaron gave me. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna um, start playing with it a little bit. Um, I want to make the background of the window darker. So if you remember, then I go to project style. And I've got something called project level elements. And here I have my window and my page properties. Mm -hmm. I can choose a specific window, home, and I give it a fill. I'll just, I didn't, you see, I didn't save it to my palette. So now I've got to copy and paste. Uh, at least you have it on hand somewhere. <laughs> yeah, okay. So now it's darker and um, let's see, I want my uh, font changed. Also, so I'll go to also project level elements. I want to change my fonts everywhere in this project. So I'll go to all pages font and I'll change it to Nunito. Cool. Okay. Now I want these um, texts to have personal styles okay so i want to make this one bigger uh, currently it's 50 pixels i want to make it 80 but only this one i don't want all titles to be uh, changed to 80 so i'll do this with personal style nice i also want it to be uh, the the text aligned center inside of its container and white this one I want to be 32. Also, let's say white aligned center. Um, I want to change this. Let's see. I can also make it narrower and then the yeah, text and expands will... downward. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so I'll make it the same width, maybe. And I want to change my button. I want to make it bigger. And I want to change the color. Um, make it this color, for example. So, okay, hover. Just a second, the default, I want the font to be bigger. And then I'm gonna copy the styles. Just... And let's make it maybe a little bit. Make it a little bit darker on hover and also on clicked. I'll save it. And I want to change my image. So I'll choose something a little bit more engaging. Oh. I'll make it a little bit bigger. Oh, very cool. Maybe she's too big, so I'm going to make it smaller again. Okay, something like this. And then this second line. You can play with it a lot. So, mm -hmm. and then when I preview it, this is what it's going to look like. Oh, wow, that's amazing, Amy. That's really nice. Yeah. Um, remember uh, video backgrounds? Let's add yeah. something. Yeah. The strip. Just a small thing. 
uh, this video. And then I'll put in, I have this video. You won't see it at the beginning, you'll see it later. Oh, wow. That's that looks really see. awesome. Oh, my God. I mean, you make it look so easy. It's like, I feel like now I have to start trying to style things on my own. Uh, start working, <laughs> start trying. <laughs> All right, I'll give it my best shot. We'll see if I could uh, recreate at least something like this, because, I mean, that just took you a couple of minutes, but it's crazy the transformation here. I mean, when I handed this over to you, I don't think anyone would have clicked the create an account button. And now um, from the way this yeah. looks, I think a lot now of people would want to engage. Yeah. yeah, absolutely clickable. Wow, that's really nice. Awesome. Well, thanks, uh, thanks so much for sprucing that up, Amy, and uh, for showing us all how to do it and making it look so easy. Um, maybe uh, since we have a little bit of time here, maybe I could uh, show off a couple of other really beautiful projects that Amy um, has built. Um, just so we could see like different things that you can do with styles and really how far you can take styles in Titan Web. How's that sound, Amy? Uh, sure. Show cool. away. But uh, do I need to stop yeah. sharing? I think I can uh, take the sharing on my end here. Do you see my uh, Titan Healthcare portal here? Yes, I see it. Great. So um, yeah, this is just a uh, portal we built for the healthcare industry and Amy did all the styling. And as you can see, we have here a video background, um, just like you know, we were talking about during the demonstration. Um, you know, pictures here for all of our modules um, to make them you know, something that, again, that our end user would actually want to first of all, to understand what they're about to click on. And so a lot of this is just helping provide information um, but also it's just much more engaging and makes it a lot easier for me to want to interact with, uh, with a website like this or with a portal like this. Um, we've got, you know, a few different things here, uh, like carousel where I can switch pictures and, um, you know, we'll look at just one more portal that we have also made here. Um, this one is for a nonprofit uh, that plants trees. And again, um, you know, if this just didn't have styling or it just had very basic styling, it's not something I necessarily would want to scroll down and read more about and learn more about, but with these really nice pictures and the color scheme, everything kind of matches together. We have these blacks and these greens, um, and even you know, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, Amy. All of these things are stylable, meaning these charts. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. So you know, and, and it all fits in with the theme here, and so that you know that brings it all together, and so first of all, presents itself as much more professional. Um, and it's much more engaging. It makes my user really want to, um, let's say, you know, fill out, uh, you know, their first name and email here so that we get a little bit of information on them, um, maybe donate to my, to my charity in this case. And, yes. you know, the styling really transforms the experience um, for the end user. So it really does make a large difference, even though, you know, maybe when we're building, we might get caught up in the functionality. And uh, we lose sight of the fact that we're often building this for end users to engage in. And so having the styling be, um, you know, on a very high level means that, you know, we're, the people that are using our projects will benefit and enjoy their experience while they're using it. Um, and I believe that's it, right, Amy? Is there anything else that uh, you'd like to mention today before we uh, go to questions? No, I think not. I think it speaks for itself. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. Well, so on that note, we will would be happy to um, you know take questions from the from the group here. So if you have any questions, please write them in the chat, and we'd be happy to answer those uh, right now. Thanks.